What's good guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be running through the full process of stripping and glanding a steel wired armored cable. Just gone four o'clock at the loadout warehouse. Everyone's gone home. I've retreated to the workshop, and yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk SWA cables, glanding them. I'll get this cracked open. Have a sip of this, and we're gonna start with what we need. Actually, before we start, this is a longer video. I am actually gonna create a YouTube short showing the whole process in 60 seconds. So if you're on site or you're against the clock or you don't want to sit through this whole video, check out the link in the description and you'll be able to get the full process without any of the knowledge behind it in a quick, easy to consume little short video. Now, tools, we'll start with tools. So first of all, you're going to need a knife, a Stanley knife specifically. I say a Stanley knife, you can use any knife. I've got nice wooden handled craftsman knives and, and all sorts of nice flick knives knives, sparing assisted ones, but you're cutting into thick outer sheath, thick steel wire, just grab a Stanley knife, something that's got disposable blades that can easily be replaced. And if you're caught short, you can find someone on site who will have some Stanley blades. So that's why I recommend using one of them. You're also gonna need a pair of grips. So these are actually smooth jaw grips, so they don't chew the glands up. They're real nice actually, but you can use a spanner or if you've just got a traditional pair of grips, just use them and be careful but yeah you just need something to get hold of the gland and tighten it up finally you're going to need a hacksaw i've got a junior hacksaw in this case but you can use a full size one whatever you're comfortable with i just uh yeah love this little fully insulated one from boddington's but yeah whatever you use you're just using it to cut into the steel wire armored so make sure it's got a decent high tpi blade on it now you've got your tool sorted, you're gonna need a bit of SWA. Now today we're dealing with some 16 mil five core, quite a small cable in the grand scheme of things. This video is probably for multi-core cables, sub 120, sub 95 I would say, because anything bigger than that, the glanding process is the same, the glands are the same, it's just bigger and there's a bit more involved with manipulating the cable, a bit more care, a bit more time. I think I'll do a separate video on glanding big cables. It's more to do with the glanding of them in situ, the measurements and the marking of them dictates the process a lot. As with this cable, you can fold it up, manipulate it, and uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. The tolerances aren't as, as finite. However, you will have to consider that if it, the cable's fixed on some tray or you cleat it to a wall and you know you can't move it at all so I'll talk about that more in a little bit. You're also going to need a gland. Now they come in packs of two or they do it smaller sizes and you're going to need to determine the size of the gland based on the cable you've got. Now there is a handy little chart which is online as well as included on the back of most gland pack, packets or cards and that's going to tell you what gland to use based on the size of the cable and the amount of cores and the insulation type. I've got CW and BW glands today. CW is for external use, there's just a bit of extra weather sealing around it and then the BW is just your standard gland. There are compex and submersible glands and all sorts of stuff that we're not going to get into. We're just going to talk about traditional SWA glands and we're going to focus on the CW one just because it covers that extra step of weather sealing. The BW glands effectively the same just without that so yeah we'll just do the more complex gland so now we've run through everything we need we're going to get into the glanding process itself so grab yourself a beer or a tea or a water whatever you want and uh, yeah let's get stuck in the first part of the glanding process is getting the shroud on. The reason why you want to get this on is because if you forget it, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. You're going to have to take the whole thing apart, tape the steels back down, try and slide it on. And yeah, you, you'll do it, you will do it, but uh, you don't want to get in the habit of doing it because it's a nightmare. When it comes to sizing the shroud for cutting, you can force it on the end of the cable. It will, you know, create an indent in the shroud and then cut that. I found that actually really inaccurate whenever I've tried it, especially on bigger armoureds. I actually prefer to hold the shroud over the cable, look down it and uh, put my thumb against where the two points meet, cut across it and then uh, yeah, always go a little bit less and you can cut a little bit more off. You can't obviously add 
the, uh, the plastic back on if you cut too much off and you want a nice snug boot as they say. So yeah, less is more and uh, just don't go crazy with it. Once you've got your shroud on, you can then get the top parts of your gland on. So if it's a BW, it's just gonna be the one component. If it's a CW, an outdoor gland like we're using today, it's actually gonna be two components. And there's also a brass ring which sits inside the gland and that is tapered. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because sometimes that ring falls out and apprentices or people who don't know any better just shove the ring back in, not realizing that it's actually tapered. So you want the thinner side facing towards the end of the cable, the thicker side facing away from the from the gland from the end of the cable and that should make sense actually and that's why it's tapered to provide a good compression on the steel but I've seen you know apprentices going I don't know what's wrong with this gland it won't work I take it apart rings around the wrong way so just something to bear in mind um, it, it's caught me out it catches loads of people out now you've got the top of the gland on and the shroud on you can then ring the SWA so you're going to start cutting into the SWA WA wherever you've determined your gland needs to start. Now if the cable's just waving about in free air and you've got full flexibility of the cable, this can be anywhere. You can make sure you've got enough to make off the bit of kit that you're you're trying to supply and just go bosh I want to I want a gland here. But if the cable's fixed in place then it's actually going to have to be you know pretty much perfect to the millimeter or a couple of millimeters anyway. So there's a few ways to do this. I'm not gonna get into it, but I will put another link in the description to a video where I terminate 150 mil four core with a pro cable jointer. And he actually shows loads of tips and tricks as to how to determine where to start the gland and get it to sit perfectly when there's literally millimeter tolerances. And that's a, you know, a big or bigger cable, 150 mil four core. So um, yeah, go check that out after this video if you wanna see some real world application of you know, glanding cables. Once you've determined where you want your gland to start, like I say, you then just wanna start cutting around the cable. So you wanna grab your hacksaw, your junior hacksaw, and start ringing the cable. You're cutting through the outer sheath, but you're also trying to cut through 60 to 70% of the steel wire armors, the individual steel cores. The reason why you're cutting into them is because then you're gonna remove the sheath and fold the steel wires on the point you've cut, and because you've made an indent on them, they're just gonna ping off, or hopefully they're gonna ping off. So it's really important to apply a decent amount of force but don't go too crazy because you'll start cutting into the cable you can pretty much never overdo it as long as you don't go crazy you can always stop flex some of the insulation away and see but ultimately only experience is going to get you to a point where you can just do it perfect every time once you've ring the cable hopefully nice and straight nice and neat you then want to run your knife down the sheath from the point you've cut towards the end of the cable. Always try and cut away from you. If your nice new Stanley blade slips and goes into your leg, you're gonna be in for a bad day. And once you get to the end, you should have a nice line down the outer sheath and you should just be able to peel it off. You'll then have the steel wires exposed. And if you've stripped a little bit, it won't matter, but if you're stripping into a bit of trunking or into a big DB, you might have a meter or two of cable. So the steel is actually gonna be wrapped around the inner cores, around the inner sheath. So you're gonna to need to unwind these and then once you get to the end where you've done your cuts you should be able to fold them and hopefully they ping off first time. Now if you haven't cut them enough you'll fold them a couple of times and you'll notice they don't ping off. This creates a situation where you can get hockey sticks. It's where the steel wire eventually pings off but it hooks over like this. Now that really affects the glanding process. In fact, it makes it almost impossible. So if this does happen, you can flatten it with a pair of grips or a rubber mallet, and you just need to be aware of that. If you continue on the process without sorting these out, it's just gonna cause you problems. You're not gonna get the gland on. So you should now have the cable partly dismantled. You should have the inner sheath showing up into a point, and then it stops because you've got the steel wire armored and then the outer sheath neatly cut ready for the gland to go on. So you're then gonna to wanna to cut a little bit of the outer sheath off so that the gland can actually be pinned between the, uh, the steel wire ramets. How much you cut off is determined by the size of the cable and the size of the gland. With smaller cables, so anything, you know, 10 mil and below, a width of a thumb is probably enough. You also wanna consider if you're using a CW gland that the tolerances are tighter. You don't wanna to strip too much of the outer jacket off because then you're gonna to have too much steel showing and your gland will compress 
because the, the weather sealing of your gland will compress against the steel and not against the outer sheath, providing no weather seal whatsoever and rendering the whole CW gland pointless. So you just want to be careful at this point. Generally, less is more. Just keep peeling away. And the more armage you do, the more you do it, you'll get used to these tolerances and get it right first time. You can now slide the main body of the gland on and you actually want it to sit under the steel wire armoured. Now on smaller cables or where the armourings are tensioned, they'll actually probably spray out a bit themselves and the gland will just slide on. However, most of the time they're still formed tightly to the inner sheath. So you might just need to wiggle the inner sheath, manipulate the cable a bit to free up those armourings so that the main body of the gland can slide underneath them. It's important that all of the steel wire armoureds are on top of the cone of the main body of the gland. If any of them are under, you need to slide it off, free those up again so they sit on top and slide the gland back on. You don't want any under, they're going to dig into the cable, it's going to affect the, the integrity of the gland and it's just bad practice. Now you've got the main body of the gland sitting underneath the stills, you can then slide the top of the gland on or the middle component in our case onto the gland, get it seated correctly, and then start tightening. Now you wanna grab your grips and literally just keep tightening until you can't anymore. However, do not overdo it. You can get to a point where the gland is so tight that it actually starts twisting the arm rings within the cable. It's just deforming the cable, it's putting it under undue strain, and it's just not necessary. So tight is tight, don't overdo it. Now, if this was a BW gland, the process would actually be complete. You just need to slide the shroud on, bolt it into whatever enclosure you're doing, and that's happy days. But because this is a CW gland, there's actually that third and final part. So you want to get that third part of the gland, again, slid down, start tightening it onto the middle part that we've just, we've just tightened up, and that's going to create a seal around the cable. The O-ring's going to start to expand, and once you've got a nice tight seal around the, the outer sheath of the SWA, then the gland is is then complete you can slide the shroud down and of course again bolt it in with the banjo or you know depending on what enclosure or what you're feeding or whatever you will apply the banjo you'll bolt it through you'll fly lead it you'll do what you need to do but that is the process complete so yeah pretty simple i mean for anyone watching that's an electrician and has done this hundreds of times this is probably the most boring video ever i apologize but i do really enjoy creating this content for learners or people just getting into the industry people in college and stuff like that so hopefully you found it interesting i'll now talk about a couple of tools that arguably make the process easier some of them are a bit like marmite some of them are a bit gimmicky but they they do help and i have got some of them and i do use them in certain situations however this is my go-to method 99 percent of the time first of all the ck armor slice so this is basically a tool that is dedicated to ringing armored cables it's called the armor slice it's effectively a g clamp with a mini hacksaw blade built into it you can press it onto the onto the cable ring it round and it actually self tightens and it's also spring loaded and you can uh, yeah ring the cable quite easily in about 20 to 30 turns I bought one because I was doing a load of SWAs in a confined space. I couldn't actually get my hacksaw in there comfortably to, to ring all the way around as this thing is obviously quite easy to use. So um, yeah, you could use this. You could also use the Nipex pipe slice. Again, does the same sort of thing. And they're just convenient little tools, especially if you get the hang of them, to just ring SWAs. Again, if I was making off 100 SWAs into the top of a motor control center, then I might consider using one of these nifty little tools instead of using a hacksaw because it's just easier it's less you know less hard on the on the hands with the repetitive task and all that sort of stuff but generally not using it next up the nipex ergo strip so this is great for actually ringing and stripping the inner sheaths of of swas obviously once you've got the gland on you'll want to dismantle that inner sheath and expose those inner cores however much you do of that will be determined by what you're glanding into but this can be done with a pair of cutters or a stanley knife or you can use something like the ergo strip to do it a lot easier. The great thing about the ergo strip is it not only rings the end of the cable, it's also got a blade in the side of it, which allows you to run the tool laterally down the inner sheath, not too much that it cuts the inner cores like a knife might, but just enough so that you can split the, the inner insulation. So yeah, real handy tool. It's also great for stripping inner cores and flexes. So I have one in my bag. I sometimes use it to strip armors and it does come in really handy. 
Finally, the Nipex cable dismantling tool. So this is the same thing, just a little bit more complicated, a little bit more dedicated. And this again is great for ringing cables, whether it's internally or externally, the sheaths of them, whatever. It's a proper cable dismantling tool and you can actually determine how deep the blade goes finitely. So it's a real specific tool. It's great for like stripping, you know, some of these crazy multi-layer, multi-component like HV cables and stuff like that. It's a real insane little tool, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's also quite gimmicky and quite expensive. So if you wanna grab any of the tools shown in this video, they're actually all available from my tool shop loadout. I'll put a link to it below. Yeah, loads of great tools at great prices and you'll also be supporting me, supporting this channel, supporting my small family run business alongside me being a, you know, a contracting electrician. So yeah, if you're, if you're interested in any of the tools or just tools and bags in general, then make sure you check that out. And hopefully as well, you found this video interesting. In. I really enjoy making these educational videos. I know they're not as glamorous as the on-site vlogs that I, I also love to do, but there's a lot of passion in me that I like to share around the electrical industry. And if I can help learners or electricians or people entering the industry, then yeah, you know, that gives me a massive buzz. I'm, I'm really up for that. So I really enjoy making these videos. That being said as well, if there's anything specifically that you wanna see covered, let me know in the comments below. I'll try my best to cover it. Can't make any promises, but yeah, I'll try and share any knowledge that I do have because it's, uh, it's such a callous industry. It's hard to get knowledge out of people, you know? So um, I try and share as much as I can and uh, I really enjoy it too. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you on the next one.